Welcome everyone. In this video, we're just going to walk through a real basic setup of Cuckoo, just uh, enough to get you up and running with it. Um, as you'll as you'll see as you go through the the documentation and other blog posts, that there are a lot of options, and so it'll really be up to you to determine you know which ones are, are applicable or relevant to the you know how you want to set up and configure your Cuckoo, and then explore those in more detail. The main source that we'll be following from is from the main Cuckoo documentation, and you can find that at cuckoo.sh slash docs. The current version of Cuckoo as of the time of this recording is 2.0.7. Um, another source will be from the hatching.io blog, uh, and you'll see that they also have a, a very to-the-point series of instructions to get just get really get Cuckoo up and running. Now, um, to get started here, uh, the host environment that I'm using is uh, Ubuntu 18.04.4, and the only change I've made to it was just to ensure that the system is fully updated. So running apt update, and then finally apt upgrade, and you'll see here that there is or there shouldn't be anything to upgrade. Maybe some things to remove. You can go ahead and do that, and and that's the only change that I've made to this environment. Um, in addition to that, depending on how you're actually setting up. Cuckoo. Um, I'm setting this host VM is actually in my ESXi environment, so I had to make sure that the um, that the host had access to virtualization through ESXi configuration. So when I set up the VM, I had to go into the CPU section and, and check those boxes. Um, that'll be similar with the if you're using say a bare metal host, and that because you're going to use virtualization for your VMs, um, you need to make sure that that is supported and enabled through the BIOS. So you might have to get into your BIOS there. So once you get to the point where you're where you're running virtualization software, I'm going to use VirtualBox for this demonstration. If you run into issues, that might be one of the issues you need to track down. Um, now to get started, then uh, probably the best place to go is to actually the Cuckoo documentation, as there is a lot of great information here in order to help you get up and running. You'll see here that you have kind of the main areas. Um, installation, of course, is one of the the places to start here, and where we where I will begin is in the requirements then. So there are a number of dependencies that need to be fulfilled before Cuckoo will run. And, and this will, of course, save you a lot of hassle down the road if you make sure that you get all of these installed. So we can begin by running these series of apt install commands. And I'm just going to, for the, the sake of this demonstration here, uh, copy and paste and allow those to get started. So we'll bounce back and forth here as we uh, as we get those installed and I'll, and I'll let them install so that you'll you know hopefully see a very similar experience that uh, that I'm going through if you're if you're trying to follow along uh, as well as if I run into any errors we'll be able to, to troubleshoot those. So um, we'll see uh, this installation for those initial packages should wrap up here. Um, go ahead and, and clear the screen. We'll paste in a new set of options here and uh, let those install as well. Uh, you could certainly create some sort of a script here if you wanted to to help automate the process. Um, you can pass the dash y argument to apt install in order to uh, accept the defaults and not get prompted uh, for you know this do you want to continue option here. Again, all completely up to you, of course. Um, and then we'll get this last, hopefully this last series of packages installed. Okay, so again, um, these were in addition to just what came natively with this latest release of Ubuntu. Um, as I mentioned, there'll be a, a number of options that you can kind of choose from as you as you do your setup. Uh, the first one here is if you want to use the web interface, and we are going to set up and, and use the web interface here. So I'm going to go ahead and install MongoDB because it is a requirement in order to get that web interface up and running. So, so we'll get that going. And... The next option is for Postgres. Uh, this is the recommended way uh, to install Cuckoo. So we'll also go ahead and, and we'll grab that and configure um, our Cuckoo instance here to work with Postgres. And instead of clearing the screen, I'm just going to paste that in. Okay, um, some of these optional plugins uh, I'm going to pass on because, uh, again, I wanted this just to be a kind of a bare bones installation. Uh, the next series of instructions will be depending on the type of virtualization that you use. I'm going to use VirtualBox for this demonstration, so we don't need to run any of these installs for, for KVM or Zen server. Uh, if you choose not to use VirtualBox or you want to experiment or explore different, you know, different virtualization options, uh, then you do need to come back and then take a look at getting these necessary packages. 
Now we can jump ahead a bit. Uh, there are some, uh, some different steps here that aren't particularly relevant. Uh, in particular, the, the Python libraries on Windows 7. Okay, um, the next option is to get your virtualization software set up. And the documentation here has you going through and, and kind of running through a series of commands, adding a source to your to be able to do your apt update, apt install. Um, I found that with the latest version of Ubuntu, it's um, already there. So you can do a sudo apt install virtual box. And this will give you the latest version. Well, I, one of the latest versions of 5.2. We'll see that here in a moment. I guess I didn't confirm what is the absolute latest version. Sometimes there's a little bit of lag with these packages and what is the latest version, but uh, we should be good to go. Once that installation wraps up, then we can just launch VirtualBox here. A couple things I want to point out. The, the first one is just we can see the version information. Uh, so that installed 5.2.34. So, you know, current version and one that is supported by Cuckoo. Um, the other thing I want to point out here, because if you don't, you know, depending on the, the steps that you follow, this, this can have an impact a little bit later on. If you look under the host network manager, under the file menu option, you'll see that there are no host networks. So you'll see in the documentation that um, when setting up our VMs, it's going to, it's going to be referring to VBoxNet 0. So right now that's not created. And um, we're going to use VM Cloak in order to do that here a little bit later on in this demonstration. But if you chose not to go the route of using VM Cloak, then you might need to create it. This will give us our VBoxNet 0 um, you know, network. And then we can, from the properties, we can make any modifications that we want, such as the IP range that it uses and the DHCP server, um, which you probably won't need because you'll set static IPs for all your VMs. This is also where you'll find the, the default IPs used, in, and again, in the Cuckoo documentation. So, uh, so again, if you need to make any modifications or deviations, then um, this is one way to do that with VBox through the virtual box interface, but we will use VM Cloak to do that. Okay, the next step is to install TCP dump. This will be responsible for capturing the PCAP during analysis. So it will create a PCAP of all of your network traffic, and then that'll allow you to not only have the PCAP, but let's say you want to set up something like an IDS or a CADA. Now that PCAP can be passed to CADA and you can get IDS alerts. Um, you'll find, uh, at least I found that with this version of Ubuntu, uh, TCP dumps already installed. So we don't necessarily need that, but I'm just going to copy and paste that full command in because I'm, I'm lazy. Uh, what we do need to install or want to install is the AppArmor utils. So we'll let that install. And now if we go back to our instructions here, uh, what we need to, the steps we need to take are in this section right here. So we want to make modifications and, and change some privileges because our, our setup here, and again, the recommendation is that Cuckoo is not to be run as root. And so we want to make sure that we can get everything running and not have to resort to using root because that would be uh, less than optimal. So uh, once that installs, um, and if you're running a system that doesn't have TCP dump available, uh, then it should be fairly simple to get that up and running, or, or at least to get that installed. Uh, you can just run TCP dump from your terminal, and you should see some sort of output here. Uh, as long as it says command not found, you should be all set. So our app armors utility is installed. Uh, we can now create some of these groups. And, uh, and again, I'm just going to copy and paste so that I can uh, eliminate hopefully any typos and also uh, so that you can see kind of exactly how these steps unfold here. So uh, a couple more commands and then we should have everything set up in terms of TCP dump. Okay, there we go. Last command. Uh, as you can see here in the documentation, um, you can run this get cap command. This will then help us to validate or verify that we have everything set up correctly. Now, the reason that we did this um, is if you are running Cuckoo and, and you're watching output from the main Cuckoo process, and you'll see all this here by the end of this, uh, this uh, demonstration, um, you may get errors that are indicating that, uh, you know, that, that Cuckoo was not able to capture network traffic and generate a PCAP. Um, I, I think typically the message is it was unable to stop auxiliary module sniffer. And these steps here make sure that you do not have that error. So if you're running Cuckoo and you see an error about you know, an auxiliary module sniffer, then likely you just missed these steps. 
Um, I jumped ahead just a bit. Uh, there is one more command that we do need to also run after this install. So this um, AA disable user SBIN TCP dump. So this will disable the AppArmor profile for TCP dump. Um, and that should now satisfy that requirement. Uh, as you can see here, there's some, some notes about the, uh, the, the different directories if you, if you deviate from the sort of default setup. So again, I'll, I'll leave that up to you to explore. Um, after that, if we continue to go down the docs, um, you can you know, explore installing volatility. Uh, that can do, so you can have Cuckoo generate a memory dump and then you can use volatility and all the different volatility plugins in order to you know, analyze that, uh, that image. And um, it can add some, you know, certainly some additional processing time, but it's something that uh, is worth checking out if you haven't worked with or integrated volatility before. Um, the other one that you might see an error for if you don't install is uh, M2 Crypto. So we'll go ahead and take care of that right now as well. That is dependent upon SWIG. And if you go back to the beginning here, we should have installed that with some of our original commands here. So that should be uh, kind of straightforward in terms of the install. Um, I have noticed though that if you run this command, it doesn't, uh, this version, it, you encounter errors. So I have found it to work just as well by saying M2 crypto. So that will install and, and now we should have all of the basic requirements to get Cuckoo up and running using um, VirtualBox as our virtualization software. Um, if you wanna explore uh, Guac D, that is, uh, as you can see, it's an optional service that provides interaction. Uh, and again, you'll have to explore those as you see, as you see fit. The next step is then to install Cuckoo. Um, and there are a couple of things we'll do here uh, that really, again, kind of uh, mimic the documentation. Um, you do need to create the Cuckoo user. Um, I'm actually just running the system as Cuckoo, so I don't need to do that. Um, once the Cuckoo user or whatever user you want to use to run Cuckoo as, um, then we need to go ahead and add that to the VBox users group. Uh, again, one of our main goals here is to get Cuckoo up and running and, and not run anything as the root user. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to go through uh, raising file limits. It's um, fairly easy to do. You can you know, go to this FAQ and, and you'll see this blog post here that will walk you through uh, how to set that up. You're just opening a series of files and, and adding some additional lines. So again, it's something to take note and that if you do encounter errors, um, this is probably something that you'll want to go ahead and, and take care of. But it's, a, again, a relatively straightforward change. Okay, uh, the next step here is to install Cuckoo. Um, you have two options. Uh, one is to install it just in the system. The other is to use Python virtual environments. And this is the option that we'll go f that we're, I'm going to take uh, as uh, this is the recommended way of, of running Cuckoo. In order to use the Python virtual environments, then we need to set those up. And I have actually found a pretty good walkthrough on Ask Ubuntu. Um, again, I'll, I'll post this link here in the video notes so that you can go and reference it. Um, but I, I took it just one step further and I created a real basic script, uh, taking out all of these commands here and then just putting them into a bash script so that we can run the, the setup here and get up and running a bit quicker. Um, you go through the script if you'd like. Uh, you'll see that it's um, installing a couple of requirements to include virtual environments, and it's also using this um, wrapper that uh, makes working with these, these Python virtual environments a bit easier. It then adds some items to your, your Bash RC profile, and when this script is done, as you'll see in just a moment, we'll be able to create our virtual environment, and then that's where we'll actually install Cuckoo. So I'm just going to grab this as a raw file and, and save this page to my desktop. Okay, we'll go back to uh, the terminal now, make sure that we're on the desktop. I'm gonna make this executable. Uh, the way that I've set this script up is that there are some commands that will run a sudo and there's others that we do not want to run a sudo. So we can use the sudo command in order to uh, allow those uh, elevated commands to run, but we can tell it also then that, uh, that for any command that does not have sudo in it, let's go ahead and run that as our current user, which is cuckoo. So. Now we can run this script. Um, as I mentioned, any of the installs uh, with apt, I just went ahead and, and gave it the dash y option so that it accepts the default. So that way the script should run in its entirety. 
Now you'll notice um, in the script here, uh, I there's a there's a source bash rc. Let me zoom this in a bit here. Um, not all environments support that. In fact, the the default for Ubuntu says that you can't source your bash rc file from a script, so it's going to be disabled by default. So um, assuming that once the script runs, you have no errors here, then the last thing that you really need to do is to source your bash rc. So that command uh, right here that you saw at the end of that script. Doing that, you should also see no errors. Um, if you do, then there, there maybe was some problem, uh, particularly if you start running this um, that setup script multiple times, you might you know create some some issues within that that file. If everything went well, then what we can do is we can say make virtual environment. We tell it what ver what version of Python. So I'm going to use 2.7 because that is the version of Python that is only version of Python that's supported by Cuckoo. Um, and then the name of the virtual environment that we want to create. So I'll call this cuckoo-test just so it's very clear. Um, this will then create that environment and when it's done you should see the terminal change to be prefixed with that virtual environment. So now we are set to you know run with these uh, the, the setup using these virtual environments. Um, once that's created and activated, so that's essentially what you see with these commands here, then we can do a couple of installs. Uh, we do pip install for setup tools. Again, we're doing that inside of our virtual environment. And then we can go ahead and install Cuckoo. And that's as easy as pip install Cuckoo, as you can see here. So we'll paste that in, and now we'll let that run. Okay, again, uh, what we're looking for is that we didn't encounter any errors in the setup here. And, and typically you'll see those if, if you see any sort of red text here in the output that something went wrong. In this case, um, there is no errors, so we should be all set. Now, before we run Cuckoo, uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to switch gears here and we're gonna go ahead and set up our first virtual machine. And, and we'll do that primarily using the Cuckoo blog that I referred to earlier. So if you scroll down a bit in this blog, um, one of the first things that it has you do is, is download an ISO from cuckoo.sh. So we'll use that for our setup here. Um, it's a you know it's a it's an ISO that's several gigs. So yeah, you'll want to get the uh, the install or the download of that ISO going. And then once it's installed, um, make this directory. You might have to be a root user to do that, and then maybe change the permissions back to your Cuckoo user, and then mount the ISO. Uh, from there, we'll use the VM Cloak utility as the way to really to to manage and create our VMs. And you'll see why that is such a, a great tool for doing that here in just a moment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get this download started, and then we'll resume once uh, that download is complete.